This video discusses the procedure for the gas laws experiment for general chemistry at Madison College. For this experiment, you're going to be doing five different activities, and the activities are labeled A through E. All of the activities that you do involve the gas laws, and specifically you're going to be looking at the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and moles of gas. In the first activity, activity A, you're going to observe a marshmallow in a vacuum. And a vacuum is a reduction in air pressure. The way you create a vacuum is you want to get this vacuum jar with a tubing and syringe. And these will be together in a large Ziploc bag in the lab. To create a vacuum, you want to insert the end of the tubing with the plastic adapter and you want to put it in the opening on the side of the vacuum jar like you can see here. You want to put a marshmallow inside the vacuum jar and to create a vacuum you're going to pull back on the syringe. You want to do several pumps with the syringe approximately 10 times to remove air from the jar. As you're pumping with the syringe, you're going to hear air exiting the open side of your tubing, and you should notice a vacuum seal at the top of the jar where your marshmallow is. You want to write down your observations of the marshmallow when it's in the vacuum. When you're done with that, you want to let air back into the jar. The best way to let air back into the jar is if you disconnect the tubing at the side of the jar, as you can see here. When you disconnect the tubing, you're going to hear a loud whoosh as you hear the air rushing back into the jar. At that point in time, you should find that it's easy to remove the lid to the top of the vacuum jar. You're going to want to write down your observations of the marshmallow after you let air back into the jar. You want to repeat this procedure two more times so that you have a total of three trials and you'll compare your observations of those three trials. The next activity, activity B, involves the atmospheric pressure bar that you can see here. Essentially it's just a big heavy metal bar. The lab asks you to measure the dimensions on the narrow end of the bar. You want to measure the dimensions using the inches side of a ruler and what you should find is that the area on that small end of the bar is approximately one square inch. The lab then asks you to balance the bar vertically on the top of your foot. You want to be careful because it's really heavy. If we assume that the bar weighs about 15 pounds and you're balancing that on an area of one square inch, the pressure that you're experiencing as you balance it on your foot would be approximately 15 pounds per square inch, which is equivalent to 15 PSI. 15 PSI is approximately atmospheric pressure. The purpose of activity B is for you to experience a pressure that's equivalent to atmospheric pressure. For activity C, you're going to be heating water to boiling and then you're going to cool it quickly. To do this, you want to add water to a clean soda can and there'll be empty clean soda cans available for you in the lab. You want to fill the soda can with about 10 milliliters of water and you're going to heat this up using the hot plate that you can find in the cabinet below the sink in the lab. I suggest setting the hot plate at about 6 or 7 um, to heat up the water. You'll know the water is boiling when you see steam rushing out the top of the soda can. At that point in time, you know that the entire can is filled with water vapor. That water vapor represents your hot gas sample. To cool the gas quickly, what you want to do is prepare a uh, ice water and you want to do this in a large beaker like you can see here. You want to invert the soda can into the ice water bath and I'm going to use my beaker tongs to do that. So you're going to be turning the can upside down into the ice water. When you do that you'll be trapping that hot water vapor in the can and you'll also cool it quickly. You'll want to write down your observations of the soda can and the other thing you want to pay attention to is 
as you lift the can back out of the ice water bath. What you'll notice is that water gets sucked up into the can and you'll want to interpret that result as part of the post lab for activity C. The next activity, activity D, involves changing the pressure in a soda bottle. You'll want to get a two liter soda bottle like you can see here. At the top of the soda bottle is an adapter so that you can connect it to a tire pump like you can see here. Before you start pumping air into the bottle, that's how you'll change the pressure, there's a few observations that you want to make. If you look at the side of the soda bottle, you'll see that there's this liquid crystal thermometer. You want to record the temperature of the bottle before you pump air into it. So this big black strip, you'll see that there's large numbers on it, and the large numbers represent the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. The smaller numbers on the right hand side represent the temperature in degrees Celsius. You'll want to record the temperature and that's the number that appears green on um, the, the thermometer on the side of the bottle. The other observation that you want to make is notice the cap syringe that's inside the two liter bottle. Inside the cap syringe is an air sample. You want to record the volume of this air sample that's trapped in the syringe before you pump air into the soda bottle. You'll make these initial observations before you pump air into the soda bottle. You then want to hook the soda bottle up to your tire pump, place the soda bottle in the black bucket, and make sure that you don't pump more than 20 times when you pump air into the soda bottle. After you finish pumping air into the soda bottle, you can disconnect the pump and you want to record the volume of the cap syringe and the temperature of the soda bottle. Next, you want to let the air back out of the bottle. So you want to release air from the bottle. And the best way to do this is by turning the, the cap on the top of the soda bottle. As you do that, you'll hear the air rushing out of the soda bottle so that you know that you're releasing the air. Record the volume of the syringe inside after you've re released the air and also the temperature on the soda bottle. And that will be the last piece of data that you record for activity D. The next activity, activity E, um, is something that you're going to complete at home. And what you need for this and what you'll get in the lab is a small Ziploc bag. Inside the Ziploc bag is a balloon and a piece of string. You want to inflate the balloon and measure its circumference. And that's what the string is for. You want to wrap the string around the widest part of the balloon, make a mark, and then measure the circumference of the balloon using a ruler. You want to inflate the balloon at room temperature and then you want to put it in your freezer at home for at least 24 hours. Then you want to take the balloon back out of your freezer and measure its circumference again to see how it changes as a result of changing the temperature of the balloon. You're going to complete activity E at home and this will be the last piece of data that you collect for this experiment. This is the end of your procedure and I hope this video helps you prepare for lab.